open our hearts and our minds so that you can be part of our worship today. We bow before you, our God. We bow before the God who came to the manger. We bow to the God who came to be with us. We bow to the God who came to give his life for us. We bow, oh Lord, we bow our hearts minds, we bow our wills to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God in his holy house of worship. Praise him under the open skies. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his magnificent greatness. Praise him with the blast of the trumpet. Praise him by strumming soft strings. Praise him with castanets and dance. Praise him with the banjo and the flute. Praise him with cymbals and the big bass drum. Praise him with the fiddles and the mandolin. Let every living creature praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. We're here this morning to worship the Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and we're here to praise him because he came for us as a little baby in a manger. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're here to worship the Lord 
And even in the tough times, I was reading yesterday uh, in my quiet time that some people, this isn't a happy time because maybe they've lost a loved one, maybe they've lost a child, maybe they've just had a hard time with someone in their lives. And when Christmas rolls around, it just isn't a happy time. But as we begin to worship, and worship the Lord and stand in his presence and realize that truly Christmas is about Jesus. Amen? Amen. And as we praise him and magnify him, that he will help us to keep walking in our lives and keep walking in rejoicing in him. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm just giving Scott a little time. We're having a little issue here, but it's coming. I know it's coming because we're going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes.
Romans 10 says that if you confess with your mouth, if you just say, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth you confess and you are saved. He is here with us right now. He's mighty to save. He's mighty to heal. He's mighty to deliver. Whatever your circumstance is here, Jesus is here. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just begin to speak his name. Begin to praise him. Begin to thank him for all that he's done. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Praise your name. Thank you, Lord. We have just, you know, that's okay. It gives us a little time to praise the Lord, doesn't it? Yes. And you know, this is supposed to be a worship time and a praising the Lord time. So if there's a few buttons that need to be pushed, let them be pushed. Amen. But we're in the presence of the Lord. You, we're Lord. here rejoicing. Yes, we're here Bless praising you. him. Jesus. We're thanking him for all that he's done in our lives here at Christmas. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, anyone got a testimony this morning of the goodness of the Lord? Come on now. What has the Lord done for you? Anyone? I got something. Come on, sister. Hey, hey. Say it. Say it. Say it. I've shared. I've shared. Get many, on the mic. I've shared many times how my heart's heavy this time of year, but this year I've got the victory. He, he just, he, he, all this I've been through this last year, the hard walk, and the praising and getting out of bed and praising anyway, he took he took that sadness away. It's been over 30 years, and I got it back. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Oh, boy. Praise the Lord. You know, it's hard when you're depressed. It's hard to push past that. But, you know, in praise and worship, and being with the people of the Lord, being in the presence of the Lord, it makes a difference, doesn't it? it does. Anyone else have something that, that's the Lord is that you just want to share? Come on, sister. Oh, amen. Yeah, we're praising the Lord. Amen. Thank you, the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Anyone else? These times are precious when we can just share the goodness of the Lord and what he's done. You know, we, we've been here a whole year and God has done so many wonderful things. Anyone else have something they just want to share? Anyone else? Anyone else? Well, let me share what the goodness of the Lord has done. Yesterday uh, at Fred Jordan Mission, we were sharing and and the second service, I, I led the second service by saying the Christmas story, and I gave the altar call, and I would say more than half of those people raised their hands, Praise and it was Lord. a blessing, yes, to lead them in the prayer of salvation and see their lives changed and being, be able to encourage them just go to church, read your Bible, do what we're doing, and see them grow in the Lord too. He's mighty to heal. Yes, He's Lord. mighty Thank to move. Hallelujah, yes, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Thank you.
If Jesus conquered the grave, there is nothing that any of you are facing this morning that he cannot conquer. I want to sing this a couple more times, and I want you to reach out to him with everything in your heart, and if there's anything that's troubling you, stealing your peace right now, things that would cause you not to be joyful at a time when we're celebrating the birth of the only hope in this world, then let's give it to him. Yes, yes. Give it fully over to him. Close your eyes, right? lift up your hands to him, and just ask him to move in any circumstance that we pressing down on you right now. Three. is the light of the world. Yes. He said, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of lights, yes. of life, sorry. We were here to worship him as the light of life.
Good morning. You may be seated. This technology is something else. It gets you in trouble. Amen. Do I have any witnesses here? If you came here this morning with a heavy heart, get rid of it. If you came here feeling guilty, get rid of it. And uh, I sympathize with Scott right now because I'm having that same problem. That problem of finding what I need. <laughs> and I have it. Amen. 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 Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, Lord, we can do better than that. Yes. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Amen and amen, amen and amen. And thank you for the worship team for bringing in the Lord. The reading today is from Old Testament. And we know that Old Testament prophesied the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so listen to the words from Isaiah, one of the great prophets. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Amen. Amen. And may God add his blessing to the reading of his word in Jesus name. kind of a fun Christmas song. <clears throat> it's called Mary's Boy Child. And it's done sort of in a um, island sort of way. Calypso, there you go. So why don't you stand up and get ready to sing because yeah. it's, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And it celebrates the birth of Jesus. Go in 
Bethlehem, so the Holy Bible say. Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas Day. Now hear the angels sing, who came born today? And that shall live forevermore, because of Christmas Day. announcements. We'd like to welcome you all here today, those that are visiting us for the first time, those that haven't been here for a while. We'd like to welcome you all. Boy, I missed you guys last week, but we were at a wonderful going home service for Dr. Wong, a beautiful service, a beautiful member of our church, and we'd like to continue lifting up his wife and his family in prayer. Amen? Amen. And we also like to welcome our internet visitors that's with us today. And we like to invite them to be a part of Hope Center of Christ whenever they're in Southern California area. You may prepare your hearts for your tithes and your offerings. Also, the connection cards that's in front of you, please take a few moments and fill those out. Let us know about your prayer requests and your prayer praises. We also like to encourage each and every one of you to take advantage of our fellowship studies during the week. Of course, we are off right now until after the New Year's, but we will begin shortly after the New Year's, our Bible study. So please take advantage of that. Now, Christmas Eve service. Don't want you to forget that we are having a Christmas Eve service. That's, of course, it's on the 24th of December. Now, here's the tricky part. We want you to invite, to invite a friend someone that's never been to Hope Center of Christ, someone that hasn't ever experienced the true story of Christmas. Invite them to be a part of our Christmas Eve service. Can you do that or will you do that? Say amen. 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 You can invite them. If they don't show up, you did your job. You invited. Amen. And also we want you on Christmas Eve, uh, we want you to bring in your poinsettias that you may have uh, and we want you to bring them in early 
Now, the Christmas Eve uh, uh, service is going to start at 530. So we need to, you to bring your poinsettias a little earlier so that we can uh, decorate uh, our platform up here with nothing but beauty. Beauty. I know everybody runs and get the red poinsettia, but bring in some of the white poinsettias and uh, pink poinsettia so we can really have a, 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 a room full of color, full of uh, extravaganza of the beauty that only God can manifest. Amen? If you bring them late, then we're still going to use them, but they will probably won't be up on the platform here. We want everyone to bring your poinsettias. After service, if you don't want your poinsettias back, what we, are, what we are going to do is to take it to a senior's home where they need some cheer. And so we'll carry the poinsettias there, place it in their rooms. We've already made arrangements with the establishment so that we can do that. So bring a little cheer into someone's heart by bringing in a poinsettia, okay? Also, remember, the communion potluck will be on January the 3rd. We'll hear more about that. Now let's prepare our hearts for tithes and offerings. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, born on Christmas Day, joy to the world, joy to the world, born on Christmas Day. Dear Heavenly Father, what an offering you gave us. Dear Heavenly Father, now as we reach into our pockets or wherever we reach into for our tithes and our offerings, we just pray, dear Heavenly Father, that it will be a blessing to you, and we know it's going to be a blessing for us. But may our obedience, may our obedience just bring a joy into your heart, dear Heavenly Father, as we are able to turn loose what we feel that we need the most to bring it into your household and to watch you open up the doors, the floodgates of wonderful blessings upon us. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness. And may we always give you the praises and the glory because you are King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus Christ's precious name we pray. And the Church of Hope Center of Christ said, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Doesn't Harold look spiffy today? I was just going to say, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Pastor Harold. Uh, I just wanted to expound on what Pastor Harold was saying. How many of you ever get tongue-tied when it comes to witnessing to people, to telling them about, about Christ? <laughs> or a pastor, that's great. I know that's not quite true. <laughs> uh, you know... Christmas is the perfect yeah. time of year at this church to invite people. And this is how you can do it. Uh, I think God would forgive you if you, even if you don't feel this, but if you think you could go to your neighbor and say, you know, I, our music is really good at our church. And, you know, um, maybe you, I, I've been really, you know, wanting to do something with you. So maybe we could get together and go out to dinner and then go to the Christmas Eve service or, you know, do this with neighbors that you know that don't know the Lord. Because if we can get people to come into this church that don't know the Lord, then we're, we're going to be affecting our the community around us. And that's really what we need to do. We need to reach out, not just always have a club of just all Christians. We need to reach out. Amen. Right now, there's Amen. great fear in this world. And the only answer to every problem they have, how many listen to talking heads on the news? Anybody? Amen. Nobody. I'm the only Stop person who watches the news. <laughs> Come on. How many people watch the news? Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, you hear people talking about, well, if we could just get, you know, this group to, you know, talk to this group and this group to talk to this group. None of that's going to work. The only thing that can affect change in our world is for Jesus to come into a person's heart and change Amen. them from within. Amen. I don't care if you're an ISIS member, whatever religion you are, Jesus is the That's only right. one that can That's truly right. change a heart. Amen. That's right. Amen. So go forward with power when you talk to people. Know that Amen. the truth is with you. Amen. You know, that all these other religions, none of them are true. Jesus Christ is the one true God. Let's, let's all keep that in our minds. It's, you know, maybe it's a religion of peace or, you know, whatever. But we have the one true God. And it's not something that we should gloat upon as if we're great. We should pr boldly proclaim the truth. And this is your perfect uh, 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 way to do that in a way that's not threatening to people.
come, ask him to come and, and listen to the music, okay? We promise that we'll deliver something that you won't be embarrassed of, okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Go tell it. On the mountains, over the hills, in Starbucks, in the market, Amen. at your neighbors, where else? Uh, at your office. Yes. Go Amen. It. Go tell it to people walking down the streets, over the hills, and everywhere. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ is born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise his name. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise your name.
Go tell it, go tell it. Even if sometimes you get nervous or a little gun shy, happens to the best of us. You know, Satan loves to shut our mouths up. And there are times when you, you know you should, you feel like you want to pray for somebody, you want to witness for somebody, and you just have a hard time. Um, I've had times when it's just like my mouth was sealed shut. And I know why that happens. And this, the, the enemy wants to shut us up. And that's a, there's a real easy antidote to that. Just to say, get thee behind me, Satan, and open your mouth. So that's what I've learned, and some of you have had to learn that too. I want to reiterate, Christmas Eve, I'm excited. It's, it's hard because I had to do two messages the last two days, one for today and one for Christmas Eve. And so my mind wants to do, I'm, I'm ex equally excited about both, and my mind is kind of, I'm having a little bit of ADHD here the last few days with it. But Christmas Eve... I'm excited. My sister Gretchen really pushed me like she does, and sometimes I don't like being pushed. Anybody do that? Get kind of a little rebellious and even resentful when someone pushes you out of your comfort zone. And, and I told her, I said, oh, I'm just going to do, I'm going to repeat the story of Stella like I did last year. She goes, I wouldn't come here again. I said, Gretchen, do you know how hard it is to write a, an original Christmas story? Everybody's written every kind of Christmas story, every iteration you can possibly do for children and adults. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. She goes, I know it's hard, but, you know, that's, I'm just saying that I, I wouldn't be real excited about coming to hear the same story again. I was not happy, and um, I did complain, and I grumbled about it under my breath. And then I went and I prayed. And it, was, it took a lot of prayer. <laughs> it took a lot of prayer. And I just kept praying and praying, and then it began to come. And I prayed some more when I'd run into an obstacle, and I came some more. So I have a really, I think it's an exciting new children's story that I'm going to be premiering on Christmas Eve. So bring the children. It's for children of all ages, and I believe it came from the Lord because it certainly didn't come from me, grumbling, complaining me. So at any rate, um, I, and I don't have the rest of, of Christmas Eve's message. I'll be working on that tomorrow, finishing that up. But today's message, I'm equally excited about. Same thing. I prayed and prayed and prayed. I said, Lord, what, what, what do you want me to preach on tomorrow? Because it was yesterday. Well, today's message title is this. I'm going to give you the title because I want you to just remember this, if nothing else. And it's this, Wrapped in Love. That's today's message title that I felt the Lord gave me. You know, and it came kind of from Jim and I. We had so much fun the other night wrapping our gifts, and we got them all wrapped and under the tree. Gift wrapping is an important part of, the, of Christmas tradition. How many of you have your gifts purchased? All of them. Oh, just a few of you. How many of you have your gifts wrapped? Just a few of you. Okay, so you don't, this is not meant to make you feel pressure, but... Gift wrapping, because some people wrap extravagantly, and some people wrap really plainly. And my husband had an aunt, and uh, my sister, my sister, I'll call you sister, cousin, Sissy, was part of that family. And our aunt, dear Auntie Loie, she was a kick in the pants. She was just real and honest as all get out. She was funny, loved her dearly. And, but sometimes, it was not unusual for her to bring a gift to a party and it would be wrapped in a paper bag. If you were really lucky, she would sketch a cartoon on it in crayon. But usually it was just a paper bag or sometimes the bag, it, she took it home in. She'd bring it, she'd plop it down, there you go, happy birthday, there you go, Merry Christmas. And everybody got used to that. Well, that was Loie's, that was her style of wrapping gifts. But others of us, we have to go all out, you know. And it, but regardless of how the presents wrapped, the whole idea behind it is to try to build suspense. What's in the gift, right? Isn't that the whole purpose of it? I think besides making it look beautiful, but one to build the anticipation. What is it that lies behind this outer wrapping? Well, when I was Clementine's age, I hope you all got to see 
my adorable granddaughter singing on Facebook. If you didn't, go on Facebook and see her sing this little medley. She's just, she just loves to sing, and she's a kick in the pants, too. But at any rate, um, I don't know where that phrase came from, but that's the last time I'm going to use it <laughs> ever. <laughs> anyway, Clementine is two, and um, I was two. When I was her age, Dad took me to go uh, Christmas shopping for my mom, and I knew what we'd gotten her. And I knew that when we, we wrapped it, I knew what was inside that wrapping. And we put it under the tree, and my mom just begged and begged for a clue. She said, oh, come on, tell me what, just a clue, just a little clue. And Dad would say, Sheila, be quiet, don't tell anything. Well, you know, when you, a toddler, toddlers don't keep secrets if you don't know that. That's a good thing to know about toddlers. Don't ever expect them to keep a secret. They, they're the first ones to tell anything. Well, I didn't. I was really good because Dad was standing right there saying, don't tell, don't tell. But Mom kept begging, and finally Dad gave in, and he said, okay, Sheila, you can give her one clue. I was so excited. I got to give a clue. I said, it, it, it toasts. <laughs> that was a good clue. I gave away the secret, being a good toddler that I was. The wrapping is of no use when there's a toddler there to tell on you. Years later, my mom tried to fool my dad. He had been asking for a fishing pole. And mom was like, oh, he's going to be expecting a fishing pole because that's all he's asked for. And so she had me take uh, the rolls, the empty rolls of paper towels, and tie them together with tape. And, and, and I stuck in there, basically she helped me, a, a can of shaving cream. And then we wrapped it all up and stuck it under the tree. He was so excited. He had his fishing pole. He just knew that was a fishing pole in there. And even, and yes, and he was so excited that we were never allowed to open our presents on Christmas Eve. We always had to wait till Christmas morning in my house. And so he, mom, he begged mom, and mom finally let him. So she, he opened it Christmas Eve after the Christmas Eve services. Oh, my goodness. He was so, so disappointed. There was not a fishing pole in there, but just a can of shaving cream. Well... He took that can of shaving cream and he chased mom around the house with it. <laughs> and eventually she took him out to the garage and showed him the real pole that she tucked away for him. Christmas is a time of gifts and the wrapping is part of it, isn't it? The wrapping is part of it. And who of us doesn't love getting gifts and who of us doesn't love giving gifts? So. You know, there's a story that's told of this newlywed couple in New York City right around the turn of the century, the turn of the, eight, the 19th to the 20th century, so like right around 1900. These two newlyweds were poor. And they had just gotten married that year. They lived in this little flat in New York City. Their names were Della and Jim Dillingham Young. They had two prized possessions, her thick, beautiful, long, luxurious hair, and his grandfather's pocket watch. Well, it was the day before Christmas, and Della had no gift, no money for a, a, to buy um, something for her beloved husband for their first Christmas together. She fretted about it all day, and finally one day when she was combing and brushing her hair, she thought, oh, I know. I know what I can do. I know how to get the money to buy my gym a Christmas present. So she went down, and she had her hair cut off, and she sold it. Sold it to get, the, to get money. Then she went to the store, and she bought for her beautiful beloved what she thought would be perfect for him. But when she got home, she saw her hair all day long. She saw... Her, her reflection with her hair chopped off short, and she began to worry, will my Jim still love me with my hair gone? He loved my hair so much. Well, that night when he came home and he saw her, he had this very peculiar look on his face. And she said, what, what? 
oh, Jim, please love me in spite of my hair. And he said, oh, darling, darling girl. No haircut, no shampoo, no hairstyle could ever make me love you any less than I do. He said, let me explain the peculiar look that I am wearing. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a package and put it on the table. Della's fingers quickly went through the wrapping and she found to her, she opened it up and inside were these beautiful combs. The combs that for hair, that women wore in their hair back in the day. Very expensive combs made of pure tortoiseshell and, and rimmed with jewels. And of course, there's no hair for her to wear it. And she said, well, it'll grow back, Jim. Let me give you my gift. So she pulled out the gift that she'd given him, and he opened it, and he said, oh, Dell." Del, Del, Del. He put his hands behind his head and just smiled. He said, this is a Christmas to remember. And she said, why? And he, she said, put it inside the box was a chain, a gold chain for, you probably know the story, his grandfather's watch. Well, do you all know what he had done with his grandfather's watch? He had sold it to buy the combs for Della. That story you all know as The Gift of the Magi by O. Henry, and I love that story. Christmas is all about gifts. These two sacrificed in order to give gifts that didn't really have any meaning, but there was more meaning probably behind those gifts than any, the love that went behind it, the sacrifice that went behind it. So Christmas is all about gifts, and you're saying, really, Sheila, isn't that materialistic? Well, stay with me. Christmas is all about the greatest gift, the greatest gift of all, the greatest gift of all, which is love, and not just any love, but God's love. Who doesn't want to get love for Christmas? My husband has, we do Christmas lists, and my husband, being the artist that he is, he always illustrates his lists. The family just get, they love seeing his little illustrated, they've got little cartoons next to it. And this year, my Christmas, his Christmas list was, all about love, time with the family members, doing different things. That's all he asked for. He said, I've got enough stuff. Love, love for Christmas. And everybody wants to be loved at Christmas time. Everybody does. And not just at Christmas time, all year long. But today I want to tell you not only about the gift that I know you already know that you can have and you are, many of you already have it, but I want to talk to you about the story, the love story of God's coming to earth, Jesus, his son. This is the story of a God who did the unfathomable, who showed his unconditional, sacrificial, gracious, and eternal love for you and for me. And this is not just a Christmas Bible story. This is a personal love story. This is your love story between you and your God. Now, like the other gifts we've talked about, this Christmas gift from God, the most important gift ever given, came wrapped. Came wrapped. And today, I want to talk about the wrapping. Remember that message title is Wrapped in Love. Because the wrapping tells, the wrapping of Jesus Christ tells us as much about the gift as the gift itself. We all know what the gift was. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes should have eternal life. You know that. John 3, 16. That's the Christmas gift. That's the Christmas gift. God's love. God's one and only son. God gave the gift of love so we can love and live forever. And amazing, amazing that John 3, 16, and that gift of love came wrapped. Let's look at that wrapping because Jesus was wrapped himself. The gift was wrapped. He was wrapped, I call it, in a security blanket of God's love. Luke 2, 7 says this, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. Swaddling clothes, he was swaddled, he was wrapped. 
we know that parents today, because of SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, parents today know that one of the ways to prevent that is by swaddling their babies. And so my first grandson, when he was swaddled, my son Jason is the only one who can swaddle him tightly enough when he was first born. And he tried, I tried, but he would always manage to break free and escape from his, his swaddle. That was something, that was kind of a foreshadowing of the fact that he's a little escape artist. And he is today. But he was swaddled and parents swaddled. I just went to a baby shower a couple of Saturdays ago and many of the gifts were swaddling clothes, swaddling blankets. It's done today and it was done back when Jesus was born. The swaddle. Swaddling cloths are important. Luke 2, 12 says this too, and this shall be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Now, let's look at the location and let's look at this wrapping through a historic lens because there's some wonderful things that I found yesterday as I dug and dug for today. There's some wonderful significance, symbolism, and foreshadowing in this very simple verse, I'm going to read it again. This shall be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. First of all, when this was said, this was said by the angels to the shepherds, they were in the hills, hills of Bethlehem. You all know that. You, this is nothing new so far. You're going, Sheila, I've heard nothing new so far. And that's true. Stay with me. Bethlehem was still is, very close to Jerusalem. What's in Jerusalem? The temple. What did they do in the temple? They sacrificed lambs. That was a big part of it, big part of their, of their, their whole worship and their uh, religion was to sacrifice the lambs. Hence, it was well known that the shepherd hills of Bethlehem was the birthplace of those sacrificial lambs. Let me say that again. The shepherd hills of Bethlehem was the birthplace of the sacrificial lambs. David, the shepherd boy, probably also took care of, sh of sheep, that little lambs that were being born in those very hills. There was also a well-known manger there in Bethlehem it was, and there was, a, this manger was called the Watchtower of the Flock. The Watchtower of the Flock. In Hebrew, it's called Migdal Eder. And you can find it. You can still find pictures of ruins left of the Watchtower of the Flock or Migdal Eder. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that completely correctly. This was it, there in the hills of Bethlehem. And this held, contained the birthing room for the sacrificial lambs. This was the birthing room for the sacrificial lambs located there in the hills of Bethlehem. The remainder of the tower still stands today. Now Micah 4.8 says this prophecy concerning the Messiah. Micah foretold the birth of the Messiah in Bethlehem in this tower of the flock in this very tower, in this birthing room for sacrificial lambs. That is what Micah foretold. So then when the angels come and they say, this shall be a sign for you, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. That manger they knew was this place, this, this watchtower where they had birthing room for sacrificial lambs. And we know that Jesus was the ultimate sacrificial lamb who was born for you and for me. Scholars are divided about whether or not this is the actual manger where Jesus was born. But as one scholar put it, of course the lamb of Yahweh would originate in Bethlehem, all the lambs for sacrifice came from there. So was Jesus born? Was Jesus born in Migdal Eder, the watchtower of the flock? I like to think so. 
I like to think so. Regardless, we know he was born in Bethlehem. We know he was born in a manger, just like those sacrificial lambs were. And just like those sacrificial lambs, he was swaddled in cloths because those sacrificial lambs were also swaddled. They were swaddled. Why do we swaddle? Just like we do baby Jay and other babies, we swaddle them because to keep them from hurting themselves. We, they, and the sacrificial lambs were swaddled because they had to be pure and blameless, pure and without blemish in order to be a sacrificial lamb. So they were swaddled tight so they couldn't accidentally kick themselves and bruise themselves. So all of those sacrificial lambs there in that watchtower were swaddled. And here it comes the angels and saying, you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. In other words, the sacrificial lamb of Yahweh has been born. Wow. Jesus was wrapped. Jesus was our gift wrapped. Our gift wrapped, wrapped tightly. He was our sacrificial lamb wrapped in, in these swaddling clothes so that, and we, he could be our sacrificial lamb. And as a result, he wraps you, he wraps me with, I call it a security blanket, a security blanket. Why? Because a security blanket to secure you, to keep you from being harmed, to keep you safe, to rescue you, to deliver you. You are wrapped by Christ in his security blanket of God's love tightly, so tightly that you cannot break free, you cannot escape. He's got you in his M. Grace. As I was studying this, wrapped, this is the first part we talk that was shows in scripture that Jesus was wrapped, is there when he was born. The second time we see Jesus is wrapped is in John 13, verses 4 and 5. So he got up from the meal took off his outer clothing, just like a jacket, and he wrapped the towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a the towel that was wrapped around him. Jesus first was wrapped in the security blanket of the swaddling clothes, and now we see that he wrapped himself in a serving towel in a serving towel. This happened during the Passover Seder meal, the Last Supper, just before he was betrayed, just before he was arrested. He knew what lay ahead of him, and yet one of the last things he did was he took a serving towel and he wrapped it around his waist to wash the feet of the disciples, including Judas, including Judas. He showed all of us that as a king of kings, he could be a servant. He came to be born in a humble manger. He came to serve, and he came to cleanse us. That was the, the whole symbolic purification of the washing of the feet during the Seder meal was that they were purified. We are purified. Our sins have, are all washed away. Jesus came and cleansed us. No more regrets, no more remorse, no more shame, no more depression, no more discouragement. That's all been washed away. Jesus kneels. Yes, this is what I'm, hear me. Jesus kneels at your feet. Should be the other way around. Jesus kneels at your feet, and he takes that washing, serving towel, and he wraps it around your feet. He wraps it around your heart. He washes you completely forever and for all eternity. You and I, we are wrapped we, in the selfless, serving love towel of Christ because he wrapped himself first with, a, with love and service. 
and cleansing. The third reference we see to Jesus being wrapped is in Matthew 27, 59. Joseph of Arimathea took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth. Christ has died. He's been arrested. He's been betrayed. He's been arrested. He's been crucified. He has breathed his last until his resurrection. He's breathed his last. And now they've taken his body down, and he is wrapped in burial cloths, in clean linen cloths. Jesus put on trial. Put on trial. Think about that. Jesus faced shame and ridicule, didn't deserve it. Jesus crucified, Jesus wrapped, wrapped, wrapped in burial cloths. You see, that's why that John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that you and I could have life forever. We could have life. We can have love. We are loved. We are wrapped because of Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. God with us giving us salvation. God with us us giving us forgiveness, God with us giving us security, God with us giving us deliverance, God with us giving us freedom, God with us giving us life, God with us giving us love, God with us. What more do we need? God wrapped in swaddling clothes. God putting on a serving towel and kneeling before us. God being wrapped, being wrapped in burial cloths. Because, because he came, because God is with us, because Jesus was wrapped you too are wrapped, wrapped in the security blanket of Christ's love, which means nothing can touch you, nothing can harm you, and nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. That's scripture. Nothing. I am confident that absolutely nothing can separate me from, from Christ, Right? Because he came and picked up the serving towel and wrapped it around his waist, you too are wrapped in the serving love of Christ. And so you have the example of a truly joy-filled life. You will not waste your life through futile efforts. You will, not, you will find true fulfillment in your divine purpose. That's one of the messages of that. And because he came and died and was wrapped in the sacrificial linen cloths, you have life. You've been rescued. You are saved. For God, I'm going to say it again, for God so loved you that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The gift of love wrapped in an indescribable love. The hymnist put it this way, the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star <laughs> and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair meaning Adam and Eve and all you and I bowed down with care. God gave his son to win. His erring child he reconciled and pardoned from our sin. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure. How measureless and strong it shall forevermore endure. The saints and angels' song. Could we, we think, the ocean fill 
And were the skies a parchment made, were every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade? To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. O oh, love of God, how rich, how pure, how measureless and strong, it shall forevermore endure the saints' and angels' song. The gift of love indescribable, unfathomable, undeserved. That gift came wrapped, wrapped, and it wraps you now. Feel, feel him wrap you in his arms. Let him embrace you now with that everlasting, strong, sure, indescribable love. Lord God Almighty, now we come to you. And Holy Spirit, I just pray that everyone here within the sound of my voice will feel you, Holy Spirit. Because this is your message, not mine. <clears throat> May they feel you wrapping yourself around them now. May they feel you holding them tight May they feel that loving, forgiving, sacrificial embrace that says, I love you, and I will never let you go. Amen.
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just say that. Yes, Lord. 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 Well, stand for the benediction, and as you're standing, I just want to let those of you know, if you haven't heard, we signed another year for a lease right here, so we will be here for one more year. I'm very excited about it. The board is very excited about it. Our landlady couldn't be more wonderful and supportive. And, and if you haven't seen the new banquet room and our beautiful new bathrooms and everything, I tell you, that was all at her expense. Most places make the tenants pay for things like that, but she's she's been a great landlady, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So um, I'm, and she's not raised our, our lease by a single penny um, for next year. So we're blessed. We're really, really blessed. This is a gift from God, I do believe. And Christmas Eve, if you didn't hear the time, it's 5.30, 5.30. So take your friends here and then to dinner afterwards is what I would recommend. But unless you want to go coffee first, whatever. Bring the kids, bring the kids of all ages come hear my new story it's God's really but I do hope you'll all enjoy it as much as I did writing it so now here's the benediction may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace peace that passes all understanding. May he give you faith that is unshakable, hope that is unsinkable, and love that is unquenchable. Be blessed. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Oh boy, the shepherds were out there in the fields, and all of a sudden those angels appeared to them saying, a newborn king is born today. Well, the shepherds, they say, oh, let's go. Let's see that thing that the Lord has said. So they came and saw Mary, Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing on the plains.
it for Christmas. God bless you. Amen. We'll see you on Christmas Eve, right? Yes, yes, we yes. love you. God bless you.